So today we're going to be looking at the Apollo 2000 chassis, in this case specifically the R2600, which also shares quite a bit of a componentry with the R2800. So one of the commonly asked questions we get is how do we get this power distribution board out of here? Okay, and you've taken out your screws here, here. Uh, you may have removed this piece here. There's a, a metal cover that goes over here. There's also four screws, okay, down inside here that need to be removed. Once those are removed and you've removed the backplane cables that connect, um, you can also remove the fan cables. You don't have to. You can just kind of get these out of the way, these fan trays, by lifting them up and out of the way. Remove your backplane cables, and what you'll notice is that with a good shove, you'll be able to get this unseated from its eye holes. Okay, you see down there where we've got the eye holes? Now this one's already seated, unseated, but once you push it backwards, okay, you're gonna have to, there's some cables that need to come out of the way. You kind of rock this board back and forth, and there's some cables down underneath here that have to come out of the way. You have to be very careful because there is a ribbon cable down here that runs along the side of the board. And you can see as we're lifting it out, this blue ribbon cable down here, it actually runs all the way back around to the back of the chassis uh, to where the power manager plugs in, okay? So we gotta be very careful of that board that, or that cable that we're not gonna sever it or cut it during replacement. So as you rock the board outward, there are slots specifically in the PCB that clear the little tabs and whatnot. I don't know if you can see that in there, but there's uh, right here, there is a tab, and right here, there is a tab, metal tabs that come out. They're on both sides of the unit, but you'll notice that the board is slotted properly uh, to be able to get around those parts. So you have to be very careful and rock it back and forth. And you'll see now I'm standing on what would be the right hand of the server, uh, the server chassis itself, if you're standing in front of the rack, okay? There's obviously no blades in this chassis because we're servicing it. But you can see that it will come out this way, okay? Then what you'd want to do is disconnect all of these cables, disconnect this cable. Be very careful with that if you're not familiar with these types of ribbons cables. Um, and you can see that this is also dislodged. When I move the unit backward from that, it dislodged from its connector on the disc back plane. So again, this is the removal procedure for the R2600, R2800 power distribution board. Being here again, see the slots? Can maybe see it good in this picture. There's a slot in the board here to get around that tab. There's a slot in the PCB here to get around those tabs. See the slot so far every down, every now and then down the board. Those are there by design to clear those parts of the chassis. Okay, so be careful that you're not putting too much pressure on things. You don't need to. You just need to rock it back and forth, clear the chassis. The big end comes out first. Okay, same with it, putting it back in, just do it in reverse. On the way back in, you'll notice there's some resistance. It's this little cable, okay? The cable's to the power pass-through board, which is the board that's connected uh, with the big copper connections, okay? You do not have to take that off. You could if you wanted to, uh, but the whole unit rocks out. When you're putting it back in, just be sure you put your finger here so you can clear that little tab with the cable. Okay. Okay, now that we have reinstalled the power distribution board and taken the power distribution board assembly and plugged it back into the disc back plane, we have also reconnected all of the cables that we disconnected. And you'll notice that there's some zip ties missing. We like to cut them uh, just to make it a little easier to remove the unit. So make sure you keep some zip ties on you and add those zip ties back in where needed. And you can put your last cover back on and call it a day. And this is what it looks like when it's fully reassembled. Everything good to go. And this unit can now be repopulated with its blades and put back into population with the rest of the servers. So again, remember Frontier Computer Corp for all of your genuine HPE spare parts needs and self-repair needs. Thank you for watching.